this is a very worn bar. You can see to some extent just by the way the chain moves in the butt in the groove. You can also put a steel rule up against the side of the bar and see that the, when you push the chain over, there's most of a millimetre gap between the side of the cutting tooth and the face of the bar. Same on the other side. So it's really easy for that chain to, to go to the side and cut a kerf that the bar can't follow in. As well as having a lot of play in the bar groove, oh, that side's really bad, this saw, as you would expect, also has bad burrs most of the way round, which is not a good, not a good thing. What tends to happen shortly once you've got a burr like that is the the burr starts breaking off and it will actually break off pieces of the rail and make um, sharp gaps in the rail. So we'll get on to what we do with the birds later on. But first we'll do some hammering on this so that we can do our um, grinding and linishing after that. So here's a piece of um, sheet metal. Um, it's actually saw blade steel and it's, it's just around the right thickness the same thickness as the length of this chain, about 1.3 millimetres. So this is useful for cleaning out and it'll be useful for me to test the groove while I'm hammering it. I've tried putting the piece of steel in the groove while hammering it and I have found that just doesn't work. So I hammer it um, without anything in the groove. So we'll take a hammer and we'll just put the bar on the anvil and very quite gentle small hit. Work along the bar. Bars are really different to do this to. Some are much softer than others, especially these cheaper Chinese bars. But I can feel it's less, especially down here. But up here, where I think this pole saw bar has been used most, there's still a lot of play, so I'll just keep working on that. See that that's starting to close up quite nicely there. The real test is always the chain. I think we can go a little bit further. You do frequently get pinch points on the bar. When you hammer a bar, you do frequently get pinch points. Where you go too far and the groove is too tight for the chain. It's really important to identify those places with the chain and open them up before you put it on the saw. If you don't and you've got a really tight pinch point you'll get a bit loose, a bit loose right here in the middle still. If you get a really tight pinch point, you can get it enough to heat up the bar in that spot and you'll get blue spots. Blue, blue spots where the heat, the friction of the chain going through the bar has heated the, the bar hot enough to temper it to that blue colour. Well, that's actually pretty good. It's 
already miles better than what it's been for the last few hours of work that this bar and chain have done. Yeah, that really feels quite good. And I really don't think we could push that chain far enough to the side that it goes out of the plane of the bar. See here, there's a little starting. I think I'll be okay with it's just a tight spot, slightly tight spot there. I'll probably be able to just work that out. I don't think I'll try and open that up. I think that'll be fine. The chain moves freely through. There's slight tightness there, but I think that will fix itself with use. Now you can see a line along there where, and you can feel where the rails of the bar have been folded a little to close it up. So the other side will be exactly the same process. Oh, you can see a really bad spot here where the bar's really been worn open. This is a linisher. It's a unit that's been attached to a six inch um, Workshop bench grinder, really useful thing for dressing chainsaw bars. I've dressed heaps of chainsaw bars on bench grinders in the past. You can do it, but it's much harder to get them square. People often use a file as well, and sometimes a bench grind if you, all you've got is a bench grinder, a bench grinder first, and then a file to get things really square and smooth afterwards will work. It can be really hard to use a file directly on a good quality bar that's been used a fair bit and you've got a fair bit of work hardening on the rails of the bar. So what we're going to do here is this bar that we've just hammered, we're going to dress it square. I'm just, I just do square by eye, I should probably have some sort of a guide but I don't. So we'll, we'll dress the rails square and we'll keep checking to make sure that we're getting all of the um, rails down to uh, down to a flat level. Passes here. Um, then what we'll do is we'll quickly chamfer it to take these burrs off. There's a tremendous burr along there that's not good for the bar. Now you often find that even a brand new bar, if you're using cheap Chinese bars, um, they will often have rails that have never been ground or linished from new and you'll have a significant difference in height. And if you put a, a ruler on the rails across like that, you'll be able to easily see. So I'll just do this now. <laughs> 